How many think they may be able to acquire this machine? Okay. All right. So a couple things I wanted to point out to you. If you don't have the ability to make dog bones, you can actually buy them, and, and that's on the purchase manual as well. Um, they have a supplier up in New York State that uh, makes them, all right? And you buy them in bags of uh, 10, 10 at a time, I think, or something like that. But uh, you can get steel, you can get brass, you can get aluminum, all right? But a couple things I want to point out about it. First of all, they're shorter, right? They're, you know, I don't know how long they are, two, two and a half inches, something like that, okay? Shorter region. They also have a taper in them, as you could probably see. In other words, it's thicker here, it's thicker here, it's thicker, you know, it's still thicker. It gets thinner as you get towards the middle. So the middle is really on these where it's going to break. So instead of being a continuous eighth inch or so, it, it, it tapers, all right? And that's okay. You still want to know the overall length, and you want to know the overall, um, you know, smallest diameter is what you'd want the students to take because that's where it's going to break, all right? These are a little bit expensive. I think they're, like, close to... Four bucks a piece, or something like that, or three bucks a piece. I, you know, they're, they're in that ballpark, all right. But I wanted you to be aware of that. And they have steel. Now we typically don't steel do steel because it's a little bit harder to machine typically. But and the other reason ours is, are bigger, the ones they have make, is because it's hard to machine with the tooling we have something very small like this, all right. Because of that, I went ahead and put washers in between here, all right. And I'll open this so you can see what I'm referring to. But we thread in your dog bone at the bottom, we thread in at the top, and this bar, because it's, it's a longer dog bone, there ends up being a bunch of space. And that space, it'll just keep moving until it applies a force, all right? So we put something in for spacers. In this case, I have washers. The other thing I want to point out is you don't tighten this down. Right now, I can, I can lift the washers up a little bit. I have a tiny space in there. Because if you start tightening it down, even if you get it to where it touches, I found, it's so sensitive in here, it preloads it. And what happens if it preloads is it starts recording your chart up here somewhere. And it's like, oh, crap. Okay? So if you leave a little bit of space, you might have this little dip in your chart. That's just the slack. It's still the machine is moving, but there's really hardly any you know, force or no, practically no force. So if you have this little dip in your chart, which we'll probably have, because I do it on purpose to try to avoid coming off the graph, you kind of ignore it, all right? In other words, you bring your elastic region down straight right here, because the material hasn't started stretching yet. It's the same concept as if I took this string and said, all right, I'm going to put under a tensile force between my hands. Is it under a tensile force now? No. So it's kind of slack removing. Now is when the force actually begins. All right. So a couple things I wanted to point out with the difference of buying the dog bones and uh, actually making your own.